are rough, but I am doing this for my son, so I have to win now. <laughs> Giving someone hope and then snatching it away is the most brutal thing you can do to a person, especially when that someone is already struggling. Imagine promising a financially poor person a better job only to take it back. Why make promises you can't keep? How irresponsible can you be? Will you shoulder the weight of their crushed dreams, the lost chance at a better life? This was Holly's fate, a single mother who was fighting to provide a better life for her son. If I were to win, I think my son would be very proud because I am doing this for him. <laughs> That's all I can think about. She was promised a full-time position at the Savoy, but she was cheated. The buzz is that Savoy, being a Michelin star restaurant, was not keen on hiring her because of her status as a banquet chef. Imagine your employer not just undervaluing your hard work, but refusing to reward it. It can be demoralizing, right? I remember reading an interview after her stint in HK where she shared how her son was so excited, telling all his schoolmates he was moving to London, only for that to never happen. This is the exact interview quote from Holly from the year 2010. I now know that I am not going to London at all. I'm disappointed, but even worse, my son was really disappointed. He was looking through books picking out castles. Stick to someone else. Always on a boat somewhere. Making out with Jean-Philippe. Holly was young, attractive, and let's not forget, actually knew her way around a kitchen, which seemed to really bother some mediocre folks. The fact that she could outcook her pretty average competition didn't sit well with them. Benjamin's cringy remark about Holly pretty much sums this up. I think Holly's a little tramp. <laughs> See, people usually doubt the intelligence and competence of a pretty woman thanks to sexist stereotypes. What else to do? Yeah. I'm a better cook than Holly. I really think that she's kind of fucking got lucky and gotten to this kind of a smooth position where she's kind of rolling through. Where is the They are considered an imposter and met with skepticism and mistrust. Pretty women are dumb, that's the general assumption. So, when Holly proved everyone wrong, she was hated. Hate being the last refuge of an insecure man. We win these challenges because Jen and Ben think they are like superstar chefs. And maybe they're starting to realize, like, hey, guys, I can cook. <laughs> ...of how things are going to go. Can you name some winners of HK who failed this test too? Moving on. During the first dinner service, Holly was teamed up with Fran on the appetizer station. Like that. How long for the potatoes? She mostly flew under the radar, but there was a moment when she had to echo a question Chef Ramsay directed at Fran, trying to keep things on track and preventing the latter from spacing out. How long for the potatoes? She's not even asking me. It's Two minutes, Chef! Things took a turn when four of her teammates got the boot, leaving the red team in a bit of a mess. That's when Holly stepped up. With the teams merging to finish serving the remaining customers, she played a crucial role in keeping things together. Her influence was key in helping wrap up the service, showing that she wasn't just there to coast, she was there to help get the job done. In the Egg Relay Challenge, she teamed up with Jamie, and they were the last duo to go for the red team. Did both of you cook all four yes, eggs? Yes, sir. They absolutely nailed it, scoring a perfect four out of four. That's the best scrambled egg I've tasted all morning. Thank you. Despite their efforts, the red team still lost the challenge by a single point, 10 to 11. Their punishment? Taking delivery of a giant tuna and going through the grueling task of cutting, cleaning, and gutting it for the next service. On the way back to the dorms, Siobhan was in tears, feeling the weight of her mistake. But Holly, along with Jamie, stepped up to comfort her. They told Siobhan not to let that one slip up ruin her day. Is what said Holly this morning, the chefs gathered in the dining room, where Chef Ramsay announced the marching band lunch service challenge. He revealed that they would be serving none other than the marching band from the University of Southern California. As the challenge unfolded, Holly pretty much vanished from the screen, not because she wasn't doing anything, but because she wasn't messing up. With no mistakes for Chef Ramsay to dramatically yell about, the producers conveniently left her out of the edit. Despite flying under the radar, Holly's steady performance helped the red team clinch the win. During the third dinner service, Holly was given the role of assistant maitre d', which meant working out in the dining room, a bit different from her usual spot in the kitchen. Jean-Philippe gave her a quick crash course. Kitchen, don't forget that. I have been in the front of the house before. When I was 16, I was a hostess and a servant. I hope. As soon as the first customers came in, she was already on it, taking orders. Risotto. That is an excellent choice. Her first ticket made it through without any major issues, as opposed to Salvatore's. Holly? Yes, chef. Yep, yes. Throughout the service, Holly worked hard to keep the customers happy and prevent anyone from losing their cool. She sent back a dish that was supposed to be medium rare, but came out rare, showing she was paying attention. Later on, she tried to lighten the mood with some unsatisfied customers. 
very hungry customers. See if the entrees get here before the bread basket comes through. Yeah. I can get you more bread. Oh, no, 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 no. And all in all, she proved herself worthy of effectively managing front of the house operations if she won her restaurant. The second setting, she moved to work as a waitress for the second. Things took a turn when Chef Ramsay called her into the kitchen. Maria had taken an order from one of Holly's tables without realizing it had already been played. It's out of order. I took 33's order and you took 33's order. So yeah, Maria is like losing it right now. Holly explained the mix-up to Chef Ramsay and pointed out that Maria was extremely stressed, disoriented, and struggling to keep up. And her assessment was right without being condescending. If you've watched the season, you'll understand that even while providing a criticism of one of her competitors, Holly was never condescending. Moving on to the sixth service. Let's go to Beef to Wellington. You guys got that? Yeah. Right about it. Scott is proving to be possibly the worst cook in Hell's Kitchen. I know, but I think Holly is definitely a better- How about you nominate yourself, Ben? But finally, Holly wasn't nominated. It was Fran and Shioban moving on. She totally deserve it. Hopefully I can take her pants off tonight. Yeah, I mean, what a gentleman. On two, by HK's gross res- However, the dream hit a roadblock when her visa application, handled by the show's producers, was rejected by the UK's home office. Holly was let down and faced a tough reality, and she settled for the cash prize half-heartedly. While Chef Ramsay's team obviously issued a PR statement expressing regret, Holly's agent, Zlata Fairman, brought a different flavor to the story. She claimed it was all a smokescreen, implying that the Savoy might not have been enthusiastic about having a reality show winner in their esteemed kitchen. And Fox, as usual, took no responsibility or bothered to comment. Simple question. Why do winners not get their deserved and promised prize? In fact, Holly herself wasn't buying the visa excuse, expressing that she never got a chance to review any paperwork and had to settle for the prize money instead. She spoke to Daily Mail then and said, Yes, Hell's Kitchen opened up a lot of opportunities for me. But now I'm not going to London, it would at least be nice if Chef Ramsay had the decency to call and let me know what was going on. I know it was only a reality TV show, but it's my life after all. <sighs> She's right. Hell's Kitchen, it was a hell of an embarrassment, man. But Holly was undeterred. She followed her culinary passion in Florida, taking on the role of executive chef at B Oceans. However, the kitchen was just the beginning of her diverse career journey. She embarked on a globetrotting journey, immersing herself in food and farming research. Drawing inspiration from the finest establishments worldwide, she translated her findings into the creation of Green Acres Farm in Beaumont. At Green Acres Farm, Holly developed numerous heirloom vegetable varieties and championed responsible farming practices. And as the national spokesperson for Le Cordon Bleu Culinary Schools, she shared these culinary and farming insights with the wider world. She then took a detour into the field of design and even launched the lifestyle program Sense Wellness. A glance at her LinkedIn profile reveals the significant distance she's covered since her 2010 Hell's Kitchen win. She serves as the president and chairperson of Intelligent Lighting Systems since June 2020. By the way, she also married her business partner and she now goes by Holly Love. To me, she is a living proof to the idea that one's career path can be as varied as their passions. And that sometimes, rejections are just redirections. So, what do you have to say about Holly's journey on the show? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications. And if you want to watch another mind-bending video, then make sure to check out this next post right here. It's even crazier!